I speak today to give people a hungry, a hunger to go past where they are. That is my heart. And uh, I can tell you, though, there are people today that are misinterpreting the moment. And there are churches today that are doing so much the same thing that the world is doing, you can't tell the difference. Their opportunity has been given to be set apart. And instead of being set apart, there are so many that call themselves sons and daughters of God that have chosen to be included in those who function in fear. And there's a fine line, though, and there's no condemnation. What I am saying to anybody under the sound of my voice today, let's figure out who we are today. If you're uncertain of who you are today, let's figure it out. If your response has not reflected the anointing of God in you, then repent and ask Him to now give you the opportunity to reflect a different perspective. Because I want eyes of the Spirit. I don't want to see fruit hanging on a tree that gives me the natural ability to see, but I want spiritual sight. I don't need the fruit on the tree to give me sight to see. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to give me sight to see. The breath of God, the pneuma of God. Somebody say amen this morning. So I say this to all of us today. We're in an odd time. Today is going to be a different day. Um, Obviously, we have many of our people that are home today because their county where they live, they are under executive orders. They're not allowed to leave their homes unless it's uh, mandatory or necessary or whatever. What's the word they're using? Essential. And uh, so they're not able to leave their homes, and they're honoring that. They're rendering to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Likewise, we're going to do the same. Now, I know that if you're watching online today from wherever you are, first of all, I want to encourage you to invite others to join in with you. Never has there been a better time for you to invite your neighbors to a place where they can hear hope. Because usually, most of you that are watching online would be sitting right here in this building with us usually. But today you're at home. So usually when you're in this building, you may have neighbors and co-workers that wouldn't be willing to possibly come into the building with you, but they would be willing to watch online with you in a place where you can offer them a coffee or a tea and maybe a couple of eggs with bacon. But they're with you and they would come and they would be a part. What a great opportunity for you to demonstrate that the gospel is just as effective in your living room at home as it is in the living room of this assembly. But right now, wherever you're watching from, we encourage you, share the ability to others, for others, with others, to be able to stream what it is the Father is doing here. So, because some are under the executive order to stay home, and it isn't an option today for them, um, I appreciate you, first of all, falling in line with that. That is the right thing to do. Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Caesar doesn't understand the things of God. Caesar never understood the things of God, and even when he began to understand the things of God, when Christ stood before Pontius Pilate, and he began to think, maybe he is the Son of God. Perhaps. It's possible. And I can tell you that even in the consideration, there are a people out there, they're just waiting for somebody to stand up. We're going to render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar because Caesar's never going to get it. And even when Caesar sees it, he's not going to accept it. And I can tell you that this COVID-19, and I'm just talking freely this morning. I'm telling you, COVID-19 was only allowed to come into the earth because God allowed it. If God would have told it to stay away, it would have. But he allowed it to come into the earth. The people that, are, that it is touching, it's touching the righteous. It is touching the unrighteous. It is touching those with faith, those without faith. It is touching every, it doesn't care what color skin you have. It doesn't care what your weight is. It doesn't care how old you or young you are. It doesn't care what your education is. COVID-19 has come and it has come to touch. But it isn't about the touching. It's about the revealing of the hearts of men. And that's why COVID-19 is here. And the only way to reveal the hearts of men is to touch the heart. And it is touching the heart. We are gathered together today, those of us that are here, because we have something to do. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to conclude the series today, Until, the Until series. The subject being, Until We Accept. Until We Accept accept the next. Proverbs 31:25 in the English Standard Version reads like this. It says this it says 
uh, she said to King Lemuel, she, he, uh, the mama said, Lemuel, this is what a good woman looks like. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of her future. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she is able to laugh without fear of the future. In other words, there is, she carries herself in such a way that no matter what is going on around her, she has the ability to enjoy her moment. She never lets what she thinks is coming influence where she is. One of the things that we're seeing, sometimes we call it preparation, sometimes we call it a reaction, but one of the things that we're seeing with COVID-19 is this whole uh, assumption, everything is based on assumptions because we've never had COVID-19 before. I'm not calling it the coronavirus because everybody has coronavirus, not everybody has COVID-19. So the, it's something that we've never dealt with before, we've never seen this before so the decisions that are being made today the panic that exists today it exists because we don't have a precedent to go back to and say at that time and in that season this is how it was handled and the outcome was okay if everybody knew COVID-19 is here and there's no concern, even if you get it, they're going to give you a shot and it'll be over in three to ten days. If everybody knew that and was comfortable with that, the panic would be far less. They wouldn't be shutting down businesses and ministries and uh, social activity. They wouldn't be doing all of that. But, but that isn't there. And here... The king's mama said to him, let me tell you what kind of woman is a special woman. It's the one that carries herself in such a way that she recognizes that though the future might hold within it some unknowns, she still knows how to laugh in her present. She still knows how to carry herself with joy in the moment that she is in. I have full control and authority over my right now. I have no control over my tomorrow. The best I can do about tomorrow is to leave it in the hands of God and to believe that because of my relationship with Him, He's going to take care of it for me. By the time tomorrow becomes my today, already He's provided an answer. But I won't have the answer until the tomorrow becomes the today because I don't need to know yet. Don't worry about tomorrow. Take care of what sits before you, what stands in front of you. So I say that today because it's important that we position ourselves, whether we're male or female, that we position ourselves in this way. May we, as sons and daughters of God, carry ourselves with such dignity and poise that when people look to us, they don't say about us, I can't come talk to you because you're as afraid as me. I can't come talk to you because you look more afraid than I do. No, we want to carry ourselves, we want to find ourselves laughing and enjoying ourselves in the middle of it all. The economy is tanking. It's true. And so are the gas prices. Woo! When I refer, and I shared this in the team meeting this morning before we met, when we prayed and before we came out here. I referenced the death angel in the Old Testament. Do you remember when Moses came in, and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm going to really shorten this up significantly, but Moses came in and he, he said, hey, let my people go, and he said, Pharaoh said no, and he said, let my people go, Pharaoh said no, he said, let my people go, Pharaoh said no, he said, let my people go, Pharaoh said no. He got tired of saying, let my people go, Pharaoh got tired, of, he, he didn't get tired of saying no, so Moses said, Father, what do you want to do? And he said, okay, this is the last straw, I'm going to kill all the firstborn. And this is what I want you to do, Moses. I want you to tell my people, even though they don't know me, they're still my people. There's a lot of people watching online. There's a lot of people watching today. They're still God's people. They just don't really know him like others do, like they can know him. Let me put it that way. And he said, so tell my people I want them to take some blood of the lamb, some lamb's blood, and I want them to put that over their door. And when they put it over the door, I'm going to send the death angel. The death angel is going to come, and he's going to pass. And as he passes, and, and people are going to ask, why do I want to put blood on my door? Well, because God said so. 
So he said, put blood over your door. So they put blood over the door. The death angel came. The death angel passed. And, and they heard cries in the land. And the cries were the firstborn of everybody that did not have the blood over the door. Everybody that did not have blood over the door. Everybody that did not have blood over the door. So whether they understood it or not, those who had even any measure of faith or even any sense that somehow maybe there is a God that's involved in this, I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to do, if there's anything I can do, if there's anything I can do to protect my seed, why wouldn't I? I don't need to understand it. If there's anything I can do to protect my seed, why wouldn't I? So they put, the death, uh, they put the blood over the door. The death angel passed. Their children lived and everyone else's did not. Now, what is going on here? And, and I can tell you two things that's interesting about this. The father didn't ask them to leave the blood there forever. I'm going to pass in one night. One single night I'm going to pass. You can take the blood off and paint your door blue if you want to. But in one night, I'm going to pass over. And I'm going to take care of business. The provision of the Father was not... Hear what I'm about to tell you. This isn't really what I'm preaching on, but I could. Maybe another time. But the provision of the Father was not that he was going to kill the firstborn so that Pharaoh's heart would be turned. Okay, I'm going to say this clearly and slowly because it's important to me that you get what I'm about to tell you. The provision of God, say it with me, the provision of God was not the death angel that came to take out the firstborn. That's all you got to say. I'm going to say it again because it's important you get this. The provision of God was not the death angel. The provision of God was the revelation of the blood. If you can receive the revelation of the blood, the death angel becomes irrelevant. Do you hear me this morning? The fathers, in the natural, our mind focuses on God sent the death angel. What happened was God sent the answer for the death angel that was released. He sent the revelation of the blood and he said if you can understand that I am sending provision my provision is revelation my provision is you understanding that if you will trust me even when it doesn't make sense why would I put blood over my door we've never put blood over our door ever If you can receive the revelation of the blood, the provision is in His revelation in any given moment at any given time. His provision is in the revelation. I'm going to say it again. His provision is in the revelation. His provision, Tom, is in the revealing. It is in the revealing. It is in the revealing. What didn't you see that you now see? That's where my provision is. That's where my provision has its hand. We have opportunity today. We have opportunity today. We have opportunity to receive the provision of revelation that is coming to you and me. What are we going to do with that? I'm, gonna, I'm not in any way implying that COVID-19 is the death angel, yet to some it is. What I am implying is that there is provision for revelation for you and me. But I posted on Twitter this week because I was so annoyed in my spirit. I was angered in my spirit at the response of churches, leadership. 
so irritated at their quick, their reluctance to be a demonstration and their, their expediency to become just another part of what everybody else is doing. Was why, and I had to ask, why is it so easy for them to just fall in line? Why is it so easy for them to say, oh, they're suggesting that we shut our doors. Let's do that. The church has always been, the gathering, the assembly of the churches has always been the place where people who were looking for hope or healing or deliverance or salvation were able to come to. But today, in this time and in this moment, the revelation, the provision of revelation has been missed when the Father said something's coming and you have opportunity to be a demonstration. The church world has said, oh, the government, Caesar wants us to shut our doors. We don't have to, but let's just do it. There's wisdom in that. There's stupidity in that. Maybe I'll edit that last part. I'm embarrassed by what people have done in church leaders, how quickly church leadership have fallen in line. I'm embarrassed by it. Some I know, some I don't know, but I'm embarrassed by their, and I even tweeted it, and if I could look it up, I would read exactly how I said it. My wife said, Hon, you know, that's a little sharp. You might, <laughs> might want to adjust that. But I responded because there's a part of me that I want to, you know, call it what you want. I, um, I, I wanted to accept that it was holy anger, and it was anger, and I was angry because I'm so embarrassed. I'm not looking. I just, I know this house, and I know you, and I know if I say come, you're coming, and I know other guys will say the same thing, but they wouldn't. But I was angry, I was upset, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed of different ones because I thought, my. I even said to some that were telling me, this, it's, this is what we have to do, we're required to do this. And, and I said to some, you're not required to do it. Nowhere in the United States yet is it even required. Nowhere. But we jump to conclusions, so, leadership jumps to conclusions so quickly. I'm going to tell you why leadership does it, because they don't have faith themselves. Now I'm going to make some folks mad. Not in this building. I wonder how many of our leaders that call themselves sons and daughters of God and they're leading churches great and small today, I wonder how many of them, and maybe this is a referendum on each of them. Not intentionally. I'm not trying to hurt, wound, offend, belittle, berate, uh, there are people that are way ahead of us in faith and confidence and zeal and passion. There are. But I'm, I'm telling you, I wonder how many people, before they even asked the Father, what should we do, they went to the county page. Yep. Yep. Their Bible that they preach out of every Sunday became suddenly their county Facebook page. That became their word and spirit. I've yet to hear a single minister that I've spoken to, not one single minister that I've spoken to, I've yet to hear one of them say, we're not having service because it's the word of the Lord. Not one. I've not heard it yet. Not one. But I've heard every one of them say, this is what they're asking us to do. This is what they're suggesting we do. This is what they want us to do. I'm bothered by that. Until we accept what he has prepared for us ahead, everybody say ahead, ahead. of where we are, we are destined to only hope for what will never come. Let me read it again. Until we accept what God has prepared for us ahead of where we are, beyond where we are, then we are destined to only hope for it because it will never come. If I cannot accept what is in front of me, the best I can do is forever hope for it. Doesn't matter if it is, doesn't matter if it exists, doesn't matter if I can walk in it today, but if it's out there and if I look at that thing until I accept that he prepared a way for me to get there. Yes. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. If 
I continue to tell myself, this is where he's got us, and that this is the church, this is where the church is supposed to be, and this is New Testament, I want to stop saying New Testament, Old Testament, I want to say, what is the word? Who cares if it's Old Testament or New Testament? I want the right now Testament. What is the current Testament? What is today's Testament? Today's Testament. Doesn't make the old or the new irrelevant. It just means we got to somehow put all that that together because the old and the new are supposed to be showing us, leading us to what he's saying right now. So let me ask you again, until we accept what he has prepared ahead of where we are, we are destined to only hope for what will never come. We can choose to remain in hope or we can turn our hope into reality. We can choose to keep looking at it and saying, you know what, I'm just, he said I would stay here until this happened. And, and, and once that until comes, you know, that's going to happen. But so much of the church, I'm just going to hang out right here. That until, it's a pretty thing. On the other side of that until, it's a pretty thing. But, you know, I'm just at peace hoping. In fact, he, he said, man, hey, listen, I, I want, hope is good. Hope is good. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to keep hoping. I'm just going to keep doing this five-fold thing. I'm just going to keep doing this law thing. I'm just going to keep doing New Testament law. I'm going to keep doing whatever. I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to keep on, I'm going to keep on. And even though I'm mature, and even and we'll get to this in a minute, but even though I'm all of these other things, I'm just going to stay put right here. I'm not going to step over into what it's supposed to look like. Let me ask you a question this morning. Can we accept the Father's next? Can we? Can we accept what's coming next? I have two labs, two yellow labs. And I was out there yesterday, and I was in the, uh, letting them swim, and, and they, they, they like water. Labs like water. But this is the situation with a lab. They're born to swim, and they're supposed to swim because they're supposed to retrieve birds and whatever, rabbits and squirrels and whatever else people might hunt. But labs are, everybody say, supposed to swim. They're supposed to. That's what they're born for. They're born for water. They have webbed feet, labs do, have webbed paws. And they're getting in that water, and they can, I mean, they can move along. They're supposed to swim. My wife and I were out there yesterday, and we're watching. We have two labs. We have one lab that is about a year and a half old named Oakley. And then we have another lab that is about five months old, and her name is Bella. And... As I was sitting there and I'm watching them swim, Oakley, you, he's the older one, you cannot get him out of the water. If the door is open, he's going in the water. If I take him down, there's a pond in our neighborhood, if I take him down there, when he sniffs the water in the air, he knows exactly where to go and he is like a lightning bolt. He is gone. He's not asking, are there gators? Are there big fish? Are there? He's not asking, is there algae? Is there what? He's not asking, is there disease? Is there COVID-19? He sees that water. He sniffs that water. He is full force. And he died. And literally, he's a scuba dog. It's true. We have a ball that we'll throw into the water. And sometimes it starts getting saturated with water. And it, and it kind of hovers about a foot below the surface of the water. So it's down there. But he can see it. And he gets on the edge of our pool. And it'll float around in the deep end. And it'll get in there. And he will literally dive and go underwater, completely underwater, get that ball, and then bring it back to shore. He will, he's just, he love, you cannot keep him out of the water. And he'll, t- he'll stay by himself. You don't have to entertain him. We can sit there on the chair and he'll go out in that water and he'll swim in circles. And every now and then he'll get tired and he'll bring us the ball and he'll just drop it at your foot and then he'll look at you. What you gonna do? I'm waiting on you. I own you. <laughs> he does. I own you. And we'll throw the ball and then he'll just and he'll dive in. Now, he's in the water all the time. He's in the water. Now, my other one, the little one, the five-month-old, Bella is my wife. Both of them are my wife's dog. But Bella, the little five-month-old, the first time I put her in the pool because I wanted her to get used to the water, she wanted the water, but I put her in the pool and she bounced around. I think I shared this. She bounced around like a little rabbit and then there's a little landing area that's real shallow and she bounced, 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 bounced and then she accidentally bounced boop, and bounced into the deep end and she, she went under boop, and she, you know, she doesn't know how to swim yet and she came up and just terror all over her face. And she came out and she, you know, sweet Bella, and my wife says, and she got by my leg and she didn't want to do it again. A few minutes later, she's bouncing around, 
Same thing. Got her out. And then Oakley's running around. Well, he's in the deep end swimming. Well, Bella's coming over there, and she doesn't understand deep and shallow. She doesn't understand. She, no one ever taught her deep and wide. Deep and wide. No one taught her the song. And she was down there by the, on the shore, or on, not the shore, but the edge there. And Oakley was swimming around in the deep end. Well, she likes to leap, and so she just thought, I'm going to leap. She just leaped right, and she realized there's nothing under my feet. That's a problem. So she swims, she does turn and swim back to the edge of the pool and she throws her little paws up over on the ledge like this here with fear. Her eyes are real big. <laughs> She's just looking, please don't let me die. <laughs> and she's got her little feet and everything in her is trying to get out of the pool. And then you get her out and, and, and then she comes and she lays down on the chair the ground and she just lays there and takes her a while to recover here's the thing I want to point out one of my dogs swims because he wants to not because he's supposed to Oakley swims because he wants to not because he's supposed to not because he's a lab Oakley doesn't know that he's a lab Oakley just knows that that's water and I like water and I want to be in it Oakley swims because he wants to not because he's supposed to Bella swims only because she's supposed to not because she wants to Bella has an affinity for water that she doesn't quite understand yet. She hasn't received the full revelation. That she, it's almost impossible to sink a lab. They are unsinkable. Their fur, the air, it traps air, and they cannot even move their feet and they won't sink because of the air that gets trapped in their fur. So she's out there, but if they struggle, well, anyway, not, not so. so she's out there. She'll get in there. There's this desire that that water belongs to me and I belong to it. And I'm supposed to be there, but I don't want to be there because when I get in it, I, go, I, I, I get scared. So one swims because he wants to, not because he's supposed to. The little one swims because only because she's supposed to, not because she wants to. So she only gets in just enough to remind herself that, okay, that's my share. Boom. And then gets out. Until. Until. Just like so many of us. So many of us do what we're supposed to. We do the law until we want to do it by grace. See, Oakley's law has now turned into Oakley's joy. Oakley doesn't even remember the day that Oakley was afraid of water, and he was. He doesn't remember the day that he couldn't swim, and it, there was a day, just like Bella. He swam because he was supposed to, not because he wanted to. He swam because I threw his little white hiney in the pool <laughs> to teach him to swim. That's why he did. But then one day, that began to change, and the same is true. See, Bella swims only because she's supposed to, not because she wants to, until the full revelation comes to her. In, at any given time, might be today, she's going to get in that pool and she's going to swim and she's not coming out until we tell her to. Because her supposed to is going to turn into her want to. Her to, this is, I was created for water, I was born for water, I was bred for water, I was, life was breathed into me to be in water, but I don't have the full revelation of that yet. I know it is, it is coming to me, but until it comes to me, I'm going to operate where I am, but when it comes, you can't hold me back. When the revelation of who I am comes, you can't hold me back. For one, it's law right now. For another, it's just living life. The law has passed. The tutoring has passed. Hear me. The instruction has passed. 
never, as long as Oakley, the older one, lives, I will never have again to put him in the water and point him in the right direction to swim. He will always be conscious of where the shore is. He will always know how to keep himself elevated in the water. Not only has, did he learn to swim and find joy in it, now he's expanding that and learning to dive and go underwater and be okay and do things. Sometimes he does things I think, why? I didn't even know dogs would do this. My friend Jim Schneider used to have a Chesapeake Bay retriever that literally you could take a stone true story you could take a rock I saw it I witnessed it I was standing right there the dog was about where Archie is we were on a river freezing cold water and he took this stone he said Steve watch this this was a full grown Chesapeake Bay Retriever his name was Lucas incredible dog I loved that dog and it wasn't even mine and he took this stone and he said watch this he just picked up a stone and he said Lucas come here and Lucas came over and he sniffed the stone this doesn't make sense I get it but it did to the dog and he sniffed the stone and then Jim said watch this and this freezing cold water there's literally snow on the ground there's ice around the edges he takes this little stone he tosses it out into this water that's probably about three or four feet deep the dog, he, the dog sits there just stares at the spot and Jim says get it Lucas dives into that water goes down and grabs the exact stone in the bottom of that water the exact stone stone he didn't smell it so it had to be a sight thing but somehow he knew but you know what that was his joy you don't teach a dog to hold its breath it holds its breath because it knows when water covers my intake valve don't try to intake <laughs> accepting the next is what the father wants you and me to do Bella is coming into her accepting the next. But she cannot accept that she can scuba dive until she first learns that she can simply swim in peace without fear of sinking to the bottom, which will never happen. Bella will never touch the bottom of the deep end. Never. It's not even possible. But she doesn't know that. But one day she will. Her next is coming. And I want to refer back now to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15 in the English Standard Version. Let me begin to wrap up because I want to do some things this morning. It says, and I'm referring back to what we talked about the very first week when I taught on the bridge, until the bridge. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Everybody say, until. until. Okay, let me read the first part. Now let me just read it all, then we'll come back. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may lo no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceit deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ. See, what is missed here is what the next is. It's really easy for us to stay in what is current because current is comfortable. But to believe that this current moment is leading us to a better moment is very difficult to receive. So let me read this differently. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers in order that they might equip the saints for the weak, uh, work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. That's tremendous, and that is a true, 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 true statement. Then verse 13 begins with this simple word that joins these things together, until. Everybody say, he gave them, he gave them. Until. until. So let me ask some questions this morning. Let me see if I can do this really easily. Has anybody in here attained to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God? Does anybody in here have the knowledge of the Son of God? Yes. Raise your hand. You have the knowledge of the Son of God, okay? Does anybody in here believe that you have come to mature manhood? You're a mature man now. 
You don't live a life of sin. You understand you're no longer a sinner. That you're a son. Okay. Anybody in here believe that you have come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? What does that mean? Let me explain what that means. The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ means I understand that I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ and everything that's available to him is available to me. So I'm never without an answer. Does anybody believe you've gotten there? So that we may no longer be children. Does anybody believe that you're no longer a child? Okay, that's important that I ask these. Is there anybody here that you can say about yourself, I'm not easily taught, don't raise your hand because this may not be true for everybody, but you can easily say, I'm not tossed to and fro by every wind and wave of doctrine. Everything that comes up, I'm not, I'm not scattered by it. It doesn't bother me. I'm secure in what I believe. I trust the revelation of God. Do you believe that? about? Don't, don't show me your hand. But you, there are those who believe that. You cannot be manipulated by human cunning, craftiness. And you can speak the truth in love, knowing that while you exist on the other side of until, this next line is very important, we are still growing up in every way into Him who is the head. Christ coming into the until doesn't mean I stop growing up I'm just growing up as a man not as a child I'm growing up with greater responsibility I'm trusted with more now if we believe that beginning with verse 13 that that is the next As I said before, I want to remind us again as I conclude this part of it today, the Until series. I want to remind everybody that's listening to my voice or watching me today. I want to remind you, you can choose today to exist and to continue to exist as long as you're breathing air in verses 11 and 12. Or you can accept and you can hope while you exist in 11 and 12, you can hope for 13, 14, and 15. But you can't move into 13, 14, and 15 until you step out of 11 and 12. <laughs> you can't do it. We cannot be babies and adults at the same time. When your children are growing up in your house, they are either children or they are adults. They are either babies or they are not. Do you hear me today? Why am I saying all of this? Because I'm imploring you today. I am exhorting you today. I am providing for you provision from the Father of revelation. Opportunity for you to accept. Now, You might still be in 11 and 12. And you might still need the apostolic and the prophetic. And there are people that need that because they haven't come to the fullness yet. They're not in that mature manhood place yet. They're still easily swayed by the craftiness of men. They don't understand what they believe yet. There are people that are still there. They still need 11 and 12. I get that. But just because there are some who are not in 13, 14, and 15 does not hold all of us prisoner to 11 and 12. Somebody has to prove to those who are not there yet that you can actually get there. All of the teaching leads us to this place. The fullness, the fullness, the fullness. Kaylee sang about it this morning. The fullness. All of this leads us. I have to be willing to accept the next. And until I accept the next, I'm always going to be standing on this side saying, oh, one day I'm going to grow into the fullness of Christ. One day I'm going to become this. But as long as I continue, and I use this particular passage as the example, there are many others. But until I come to the place where I believe I will not always need an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, evangelist, or teacher. And we better get there. Because they won't always be available. Right. 
And if I find my security in being your apostle or prophet or pastor or evangelist or your teacher, I'm failing you. And I'm failing me. And I'm failing God. But there is a next. There is an until. He said, receive from them. Until, and when you get to this place, and when you look in the mirror, and you see all of these points, you see, man, the knowledge of the Son of God dwells in me. I know who I am in the Father. I'm no longer uncertain that I'm a son or a daughter. I'm certain. And you can go through these, and you know this is where I'm at. Be thankful. The fivefold likely got you there. In fact, it did. Teaching. And the fivefold is New Testament law. It's saying, do this because you're supposed to until you do it because you want to. Do this because you're supposed to. And when you begin to do it because you want to, know that you're in 13, 14, and 15. Does anybody hear me today? So what does it do? You know, it's one thing to say, It's one thing to say that, wow, you know, I can get into 13, 14, and 15. I can accept that. I don't want to get down here and confuse the camera. But it's one thing to say, I can accept that I'm mature. I can accept that I do this now because I want to. I can accept that I do this now. I don't put blood on the door anymore because I don't need to put blood on the door anymore because they needed blood because they didn't yet know God. But he never asked them to put blood on their door again. But if I can accept that I've gone to this place, well, the only way that I know that is when we begin to demonstrate and we do demonstrate. So we're going to do something. I said to my wife yesterday, it bothered me because I didn't want to be, and I said this to you earlier. It bothered me that I did not, could not figure out how are we going to lead differently because I am not going to fall in line with the crowd. Hold on just a second, Tom. Thank you. I do want to come to you, but hold on just a second. I'm not going to fall in line with the crowd. I'm not going to do it. Because I don't like where the crowd is. I don't like where many of the crowd that I hang out with is. But I like where you are. I like where you are. And I like what you bring. When I sit back there, or stand back there in the morning before we come out here and I listen to what some of these guys bring and say man sometimes it messes me up because I got to come out here and now try to preach without thinking about what they said (laughs) because they brought revelation they brought their mature manhood their sonship So yesterday, when I was telling my wife, I want, I want it to be different, I get an email from Stephanie Bosch. And I'm going to paraphrase the email, and I think that I'm right, Stephanie. I think I'm, where's Stephanie? I think that I'm getting it close to right. Well, well you tell it better than me. Come up here. Yeah, come on up here. Come up here. Bring your, you better bring, you better bring, you better bring your church. Come and stand up here, though. Tell us, uh, in summary, what, what you're, speaking what you shared with me can you hear me oh i can hear me too um is it okay if i talk about tuesday night a little bit where is my leader out there okay well is that okay yes okay so tuesday um we were preparing in case we were going to stream and the music team got together and we were you know recording some music that would be possibly streamed this morning obviously that wasn't necessary because we're all here and um I just, is this okay? (laughs) Okay. And um, anyway, it just got me thinking yesterday that if we were going to stream, it would have looked like, it would have mimicked what we do here live. And I just thought it doesn't have to be that way. Not that that would be wrong. Right. But there's such an opportunity right now that is not forever. This is going to go by. 
And why, when we've talked for years about how could we not do church as usual, what a great opportunity. There's so much technology and we're all individual churches that we could, through this resource, bring something new. It doesn't have to look like a group doing music followed by Steve Parker preaching. Right. You know, you're a church. Yes. And you could be, just for example, posting on our living room and posting on your Facebook wall and sharing in within our community and outside of our community what is going on in your church. You could be in your home and you could get your phone and you could be with your family in your house, in your living room, and you could worship and record that and you could upload it to the living room. Be careful about rights to songs, but just just being practical. But you know, Love you could it. do that. You know, really, you could be a church. What are you hearing? Type it up. Make a video. Go Facebook Live. There's so much technology. We could have a dialogue where, you know, it does. it's just we could think outside of the box. And this is an opportunity like no other that we don't have to just, what is Steve Parker saying? And that's it. He doesn't want that, and, no. and we've been practicing that for so long. We're just that's positioned right. so well, and I want to hear what's going on in your church. And what new songs could be written and what creatively could be done, what words will come out of this? What, you know, out, mother is the necessity, of, or necessity is the mother of invention? Yes, is that's that correct. Right? Yep. Well, you know, birth something. Amen. <laughs> bring something um, that only you could bring, and we can encourage one another, and it's really special, and I don't want to miss it, and I want to hear from you. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh, we're not supposed to do this. I'm trying to live, I'm trying to obey the rule. Yeah, midnight, that's right. So what are we going to do with that? Um, I don't have, this is what we're going to do with this. Let me tell you, first of all, let me say this, and then come back to what we're going to do. And I, get, get your thinking cap on right now while I'm talking, because you're going to need a thinking cap. Or maybe you don't, but I do. I don't know how to do it. Um, but I want to say to you that are watching online today, and you heard everything that I've said so far, some of this I'm going to edit out if you're watching this live. Some of it, because it just doesn't all apply to everybody. But it applied to us today. And, but I want you to know that no matter where you're at, I hope not a single person watching felt like I was judging you or condemning you for where you are. Um, if you felt judged, that was Holy Spirit. And he just used me to remind you of a need for repositioning. But I want you to know that it's life in my heart is to grow us up. Grow us up. Didn't you notice that in verse 15, we didn't grow into the fullness of Christ until we got on the other side of until? No one grows into the fullness of Christ under the leadership of the fivefold. It's when they got on the other side of until. So this is what we're going to do. So anyway, I want to say this. I've got to wrap this up. I love you. I'm thankful for who you are. Um, you matter to me. Even if you don't agree with me, you still matter to me. Um, when revelation comes, you will agree. Because I believe that I'm, like this house, we are walking by word and by spirit. We're not trapped in any single season. But we're allowing the Father to continue to grow us. Um, most churches that I'm aware of today, I would never go to. I've said that before. Um, because while it's exciting to you, it would be death to me. And uh, because I want to grow. And I, I could not be where there is not another side of until. I want to grow into something. And that's the people of this house. I bless you today, wherever you're at. So this is what I want to do. I want to do exactly what Stephanie's doing because I believe she's right. While the Rock of Central Florida is always going to have a leader whoever that leader is right now it happens to be me but whoever that leader is there's always going to be a visionary there's always going to be somebody that's making decisions that's always going to be true that's that has to be true that's that's how it works but whoever's leading it doesn't have to be the only face i don't want to be the face of the rock of central florida i want you to be the face of the rock of central florida i want you your voice to be heard so in light of that what an amazing opportunity, Stephanie, to come in line with what Holy Spirit spoke to you. And we're going to try to do something. It might not be pretty the first time until we figure this thing out. And as we do it, will we do it every week? Probably not. But when we do it, we're going to do it. And I want to do this until. Until. 
Make that a part of your vocabulary. I'm only doing this until. So this is what I want to do, and I don't know how we can do it. But I want you, because we are the churches, is it amazing to you, and this sounds like a rabbit trail, it's not, is it amazing the, thing, the pieces that the Holy Spirit put together for us to prepare us for this time? Even, even when you think about the fact, the, the, the word that he spoke to us some months ago about we are the church, each of us are the churches and we assemble together, we bring our churches together, he was preparing us, that was provision of revelation for such a time as this. He prepared us for this so that we could be churches in our homes. So, this is what we're going to do. And let me start with what we're going to do, and then we're going to get technical about how we're going to do it. So, what I want is what Stephanie shared, um, because she brought her church today, and she gave us some instruction, what Holy Spirit spoke to. I didn't have the word for how to do it next week. I just knew it could not happen as normal. Could not be. That was not the path. She got the word. I want you... At some point this week, to have church in your home. I want your assembly, your family, whoever is gathered in your assembly, not more than 10, but whoever <laughs> is gathered in your assembly. Do you hear me? I want you to have church. You don't have to have music. You don't have to sing. You can simply share a word on how Holy Spirit's uh, speaking to you, what He's doing in you. Talk about what He's speaking to you, whatever He's releasing. Keep it, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it this way. Keep it not more than 10 minutes, what you share to us, because I want many to be able to bring their story, to bring their church. Is that, is that good? Does that make sense? So how are you going to do that? Well, the technical side of that is, Use a phone, use a home camera, use a whatever you've got that we can see your face. Please, uh, it's going to go online. We're going to stream it. It's going to go out. That's going to be the service next Sunday. You are going to be the service next Sunday. You are. I'm going to do an introduction, a welcome. I'm going to welcome people, and I'm going to say, welcome to our churches, and then you're coming up. So please, iron your shirt, do your hair. Don't have your eggs and bacon sitting in front of you. This is what I would like for you to do to cre uh, just talk. Talk to the church or talk to the world. Talk to those who are going to be streaming. Somehow get that on video. Make sure the audio is working well. And then we're going to, how many will do that with me? And we might not be able to, I hope we get so many we can't do it all in one week and we have to, we, every week we have to do more. And we could do it during the day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to upload those, but not to the living room because I want to be able to download those and compile those into a stream for next Sunday where the volume level is not up and down and up and down and up and down when people are streaming. So I want to be able to get a consistent volume. The only way I can do that is if I put all of those together in one video so that we can stream that next Sunday. Can we do that? So you can upload your video to Dropbox and then share it with me. Let me give you my email address. It is Kaylee. <laughs> no, it's not. It is Steve at the rock of cf.org. But this is a right word. This is a right word. So what he shares with you, share it share it. If you're watching online, this applies to you as well. I want to know, even if you've never been here, but you watch every single week, we want to know what a great time for you to be a part of what we're doing. Watch your, you'll be able to watch yourself if you can. So send it.